Hello everyone, thanks for watching this video. I'm Yu Zhejiang from Simons Institute. I'm going to talk about our joint work with Ji Yanding at Ethan Apley and Ling Ling, named the s algorithm and high noise, optimal error scaling, and noisy super resolution. Our work is about the special estimation problem, which is a fundamental problem in signal processing. Its goal is to reconstruct the fine grain details of a signal from some coarse grain and noisy measurements. This problem has important applications from image processing to quantum computing. More specifically, consider a positive spectral measure defined as the superposition of D point sources. They have locations f1 to fd with intensities mu1 to mu d. The goal is to recover the first R locations, giving access to noisy measurements of the Fourier transform of the spectral measure, which is defined as g sub j equals to the following three parts. The first part is the signal part, which is the part that we want to reconstruct. It has the form mu uh, sum of mu i times z i to the power of j, where z i equals to the e to the two pi i times f i. And the second part is the bias part, and the third part e j is the noise part. Here, note that the index j is from zero one to n minus one, and n is called the cutoff frequency which is an important parameter for the spectral estimation problem. And we want to minimize the cutoff frequency. We also use the following three assumptions, which are very common in the literature. The first one is that all the dominant locations, in other words, the locations of the signal parts, are separated from each other, like these blue arrows, and also separated from the non-dominant locations. Uh, note that here, we do not assume the non-dominant locations, in other words, the bias part are also gapped. So the bias parts might be gapless. And the separation is quantified by the parameter delta z. And second, we assume that the total intensity of the bias part is much smaller than the minimum intensity in the signal part. In other words, the noise to signal ratio or SNR cannot be too small. Third, we assume that the measurement noise EJ are uh, I are uh, uh, independent random sub Gaussian with mean zero and parameter alpha, where alpha characterizes the noise level of the signal. So what is the best error scaling of spectral estimation can be achieved? For simplicity, in this talk, we let's only focus on the location estimation and assume the parameters delta z and d are all constants. Then in this setting, to achieve an epsilon location estimation error, how small the cutoff frequency n can be. This problem has been studied for a long time since 1992, initiated by Donahoe. They showed that if the noise is very small, like polynomially in the accuracy epsilon, then it suffices to take a constant cutoff frequency to achieve an epsilon estimation error. This is called the super resolution scaling because it is superior to the Nyquist scaling uh, derived from the famous Nyquist-Shannon Nyquist sampling theorem, which shows that uh, say, uh, which says that uh, it's sufficient to take n equals to one over epsilon for noise-free signal. So, uh, what if the signal has bias or larger measurement noise? This regime has also been studied. However, all previous results can only at most 
achieve the same skating as the Nyquist skating, like n equals one over epsilon, and it remains open. Whether we can still beat the Nyquist skating in this weekend, like the super resolution results. This motivates us to define so-called the noisy super resolution, which means an algorithm can recover the, the locations up to error strictly superior to the Nyquist error scaling, that is epsilon to be little o of 1 over n. And we ask, is it possible to achieve a noisy super resolution scaling for solving the specialized making problem with bias and large measurement noise? The main result of our work is an affirmative answer to this question. We show that the aspect algorithm, an old method for spectral estimation, can actually achieve cutoff frequency scales like epsilon to the minus 2 over 3, which is asymptotically better than the Nyquist scaling. Moreover, we prove an information theoretic lower bound showing that this error scaling is optimal for all algorithms in this super noisy super resolution regime. So what is the aspect algorithm? This is very simple, works in the following four steps. First, it uses the noisy measurements g0, g1 to gn minus 1 to form a topless matrix denoted by t hat. Then it computes the eigen decomposition of t hat, less denoted by uh less denoted as t, uh, q hat times sigma hat times q hat dagger. Then it extracts two sub matrices of q hat. The first one consists of the the uh, first n minus one rows and the first r columns denoted by q hat up. And the second one consists of the second to the last uh, rows of q hat and also the first r columns denoted by q hat down. Then it computes the q hat up pseudo inverse times q hat down, which gives an r by r matrix denoted by w hat. Finally, it computes the eigen decomposition of W hat and use the eigenvalues as the estimated locations. Here is the pseudocode for the aspect algorithm. You can see it's very simple and easy to implement. But you may wonder why this very sense work. We claim that when the signal is noise free, then the aspect algorithm can recover the locations exactly up to a permutation. Why? The key observation is that for the clean version of the topless matrix T, it has the following Vandermann decomposition, which is the Vandermann matrix formed by the location vector Z times a diagonal matrix formed by the intensity vector mu times the Vandermann matrix transpose. By comparing the two decompositions of T, the Vandermann decomposition and the eigen decomposition, we can find that the range of the Vandermann matrix equals to the range of the first uh, R eigenvectors. Then it implies that there exists an invertible matrix P such that QR can be written as Vandermann matrix Vn times P. Moreover, the Vandermann matrix as a special structure for its sub matrices. We can similarly use the first R row, uh, the, the first n minus one rows to define a sub matrix Vn up, and the last n minus one rows to define a sub matrix Vn down. Then Vn up times, uh, and Vn down satisfies the following equation Vn, Vn up times a diagonal matrix of Z equals to Vn down. Then, using these two equations, we can easily prove that the W matrix 
is similar to the diagonal matrix of the location vector z, which means the eigenvectors of w are exactly z1 to zr. Now let's move on to the general case where the signal has bias and measurement noise. So we no longer have access to the clean working of the topless matrix. In this case, the real to uh, the actual topless matrix T hat can be written as T plus E, where T is the topless matrix of the signal part or the clean working of the, of the topless matrix. And E can be further decomposed into E tail, the topless matrix of the, uh, the bias part, plus E random, the topless matrix formed by the random measurement noise. And we use the matching distance to quantify the estimation error, which is the minimum L infinity distance between two vectors Z and Z hat up to some permutation. So before stating our optimal error, uh, error scaling result, let me first introduce the single limit error scaling of the s algorithm, which can be derived from previous results. So basically under the assumptions A to C, as I said earlier, for sufficiently large cutoff frequency with high probability, the s algorithm can achieve the location estimation error scales like alpha over mu r times square root of n. Intuitively, this result has already recovered the traditional super resolution error scaling because if we set the noise level alpha to be very small, in other words, the noise in the signal are polynomially, uh, are polynomially small in terms of epsilon, then it's sufficient to take an epsilon independent cutoff frequency n to achieve location as making an error at most epsilon for arbitrarily small epsilon. So our main result is a tighter bound for the location as making an error in terms of n. So basically, if we consider all the parameters are constant, like r, alpha, mu r, and the z to be constants, then the location as making error will scale like 1 over n to the 1.5. And this is the optimal error scaling for the noisy super resolution regime. How do we prove this? In the following part of the talk, I will first um, sketch the key ideas to prove the single limit error scaling as a toy example, and then talk about how to upgrade the proof with some, no some novel matrix perturbation results to obtain the optimal error scaling of the s algorithm. So to, to quantify the location as making error, we actually need to prove that the eigenvalues of w hat defined as Q hat up through the inverse times Q hat down are close to the clean working of the matrix W equals to Q hat up, uh, Q up uh, through the inverse times Q down. And the key idea is to find a similarity transformation to align these two matrices. More specifically, in the first step, we establish a quantitative estimate that relates the eigen matrices QR and Q hat R. Basically, we show that there exists a unitary matrix UR such that under the rotation of UR, the two matrices QR and Q hat has different scales like one over square root of n. Moreover, the Q hat up so the inverse times Q hat down minus ur transpose times q hat uh, uh, q up through the inverse times q down times ur also scales like one over square root of n. So using this eigenvector comparison bound, we can further, uh, we, we, we can show that they imply the s the with algorithm's location estimation error bound. Basically, we prove that 
we we basically we prove a general result that uh, suppose p to be an invertible near isomorphic matrix, namely its norm and its inverse norm. And um, namely, its norm and the norm of p inverse are both constants. Then, the matching distance of the location as making error of the s s algorithm will be proportional to the difference between q hat absolute inverse times q hat down and p inverse times q absolute inverse times q down times p. Then we just need to take p to be the ur in the first step, which gives you the n to n to the minus one uh, zero point five error scaling. So how can we improve this proof to obtain the optimal error scaling? Our idea is to uh, prove a tighter or the, a stronger version of the eigenvector comparison result. Suppose we can show that there exists an invertible near isomorphic matrix P such that the difference between Q, Q up to the inverse times Q down and Q hat up to the inverse times Q hat down up to a rotation of P is at most uh, a scale of like 1 over n to the 1.5. Then combined with the second step in the previous proof, we immediately obtain the optimal n to the minus 1.5 scaling. I want to highlight that the non-unitarity of the matrix P is very important. We believe that if P is restricted to be a unitary matrix, then all we can get is 1 over square root of, square root, square root of n scaling. And this result cannot be proven by directly applying some standard matrix perturbation tools. We need a novel eigenspace perturbation result together with a careful series expansion of this matrix product and also use the topless structure of the error terms in the perturbation. So due to the time limit, let me only introduce our novel eigenspace perturbation result. Specifically, we prove the following structure results for the second order perturbation for the dominant eigenspace. This lemma looks very complicated. But intuitively, it says that the perturbed eigenvectors q hat r can be expressed as the sum of four parts up to a unitary. The first part is the unperturbed eigenvectors q r, and the second part is a term of size 1 over square root of n that is orthogonal to qr. The third part is a term of size 1 over square root of n that is in the range of qr. And finally, some are some second order terms of size 1 over n. Why do we need this lemma? Basically, using this lemma, we can explicitly construct an invertible matrix P such that the column space of q hat r times p inverse minus q r is almost orthogonal to q r. So uh, although the orthogonal parts might have a large norm, they will be approximately canceled by this uh, q hat up matrix in the form. Uh, this will imply this will imply a stronger estimate for the eigenvector comparison. I also want to mention that our proof used an interesting application of sure polynomials, which were previously mainly used uh, in the uh, group representation literature. But here we apply it to solve a signal processing problem. And we believe it will have more applications in TCS. And we also believe similar structure results should also exist for non hermitian Hankel, and uh, topless matrices, which allows us to generalize our techniques to study other uh, special estimation algorithms. So for more details, please check, our, uh, check out our paper. That's all I want to say. Thank you.